Hello and welcome to The Heal Report. I'm pleased to announce that this year, 2014, on November the 1st, All Saints Day, the day after Halloween, at the Art Theater in Long Beach, California, The Heal Report will be sponsoring a screening of Kidnapped for Christ. The story of a young man who is literally that, kidnapped for Christ. His parents uh, hire some escort uh, people who show up at their house late at night and kidnap the kid and take him to the Dominican Republic where he is put in a troubled teen camp. And while this is being documented, there are two very interesting backstories to Kidnap for Christ. And uh, the first is, of course, in the making of the movie itself, which was made by a student of uh, Biola University. This was originally supposed to be a puff piece for the Troubled Teen Center over in uh, the Dominican Republic, but somewhere in the middle of it, the director of the film, Kate Logan, changed her mind and decided to show what was really going on there. And the other backstory of this concerns what happens as we get toward the end of the movie. When they go to Long Beach, California, which, hey, coincidentally, that's where our screening's going to be in Long Beach, at the Queen Mary, where the survivors of institutional abuse gather to have a, uh, a convention. And of course, I was at that convention, and uh, you can see me here uh, sitting with uh, some of the new Bethany folks there. Uh, but one thing about this movie that I'd like to bring out concerns the advertisement. Uh, take a look at this uh, letter. This is a letter that's being written uh, to home by uh, one of the students there. And you'll notice the bulk of it is all blocked out. Well, that seems to be uh, the rule for a lot of these places. In fact, here's another picture uh, that I took at the Survivors of Institute Institutional Abuse Convention um, when they were shooting this. And this is a Bible that was taken from um, Kim Holt and while she was at New Bethany in Arcadia, Louisiana. Um, she had had signatures, the preachers who came in would sign her Bible. And for whatever reason, they decided that she could not leave the premises until all these signatures were rubbed out. Why is that? Those who have been following the saga of the survivors of New Bethany are aware that in addition to sexual abuse that some have claimed to have gone on there uh, by the proprietors or some of the people working there, there have also been uh, stories of preachers visiting New Bethany and being given a tour and the tour of course we're going to put in quotation marks and some uh, of the now women there when they were girls at New Bethany have uh, mentioned that on such tours they were also molested as well. So perhaps that was also another reason why some of these names were blotted out in Kim Holt's uh, Bible. But um, you, you talk to people who have come from um, these uh, troubled teen centers, whether they're gay to straight or whether they're being sent there because they're having a doubt about Christianity and so their parents send them in. Um, it's pretty much the rule at a lot of these places that your conversations are going to be monitored, that you can't have a conversation on the phone with your parents unless somebody is listening in and that conversation might be interrupted if something negative comes up regarding whether or not you were abused, beaten up, or whatever by staff. So. When we have the screening on November the 1st, this is not just about the particular school at the Dominican Republic. This is about what's going on in this country regarding everything from private prisons to the teen behavioral um, industry. And it's been my, my thought now for some time that what's happening now in the private prison industry was first um, practiced in troubled teen centers. And so when we have the screening on November the 1st, we are currently in talks with the Gay Lesbian Center, which is right next door to the Art Theater, to do a press conference, to do a public awareness meeting, 
to do all these things in public that a lot of groups are doing in private. And so I want to give an invitation to anybody who has been in any kind of a uh, troubled teen center, whether that is a non-religious place like uh, Green Chimneys, for instance, that's a non-religious place which has also been criticized for abuse. Uh, whether it's them or whether it's a faith-based organization like uh, New Bethany or uh, the center that's profiled in Kidnap for Christ or even down here in Southern California where we've had uh, trouble with the Julian School and Julian Christian Academy uh, where a, um, a dead infant was found, a newborn was found, and um, what's the story on that? The students got a lot of the blame, but we're not hearing anything about the staff and what the staff members did. So this movie, Kidnap for Christ, even though it concentrates on one particular school, by the time it's over you realize we really have a problem in this country with how we're um, raising kids. The moment they start to develop any kind of personality, we want to send them off. In California, we're under the false sense of security that somehow we've regulated all the homes and everything's fine. Regulation ain't going to cut it because you know what they do in California? They send the kids to Utah. That way, hey, we don't have any abuse here. Uh, so they think, but we don't have any abuse here, so we're going to send them to Utah where they can be abused there. So we're sending invitations out not just to those who have been in these um, in these camps but also to uh, state representatives, the city council mem members, to everything from church leaders. I'm not holding back you know I'm, I'm going to invite everybody. We need to start a dialogue in this country about abuse. We need to define abuse. We need to allow for devil's advocacy in child advocacy actually because that's not there. Um, one thing that you might find interesting is that in the prosecution of child abusers or should I say alleged child abusers in Southern California back around the early 90s when the McMartin case was going on and uh, people were actually being railroaded into jail, well those kids who were brought up by the adults who are now being railroaded also had to go somewhere while those, those trials were going on. And guess where they went? Troubled teen centers. And some of them have even talked about abuse. So it's really interesting how in the pursuit of trying to stop child abuse, we actually create more child abuse happening by not regulating these centers. And like I said before, it seems regulation doesn't cut it uh, anymore. Because whenever you have situations like HR 911, which was a bill a couple years ago that was sent uh, past the House, but it didn't pass in the Senate and it was to regulate it. Well, guess what they did? They included a thing about faith-based homes, like the ones that are going to be covered in uh, Kidnap for Christ. Exempt. If you're faith-based, you're exempt. That's the problem with uh, regulation right now. We need to include faith-based in all this. And if you have any doubts, show up on November the 1st, All Saints Day, the day after Halloween, and join me as we watch Kidnap for Christ. Come to this uh, channel and we'll tell you more about our press conference and any other activities that might uh, come out of um, this event. But we're looking forward to it. It's, it's going to be uh, interesting, it's going to open a lot of minds, and maybe people who've never met each other before um, will finally meet and new and more effective alliances might be forged and maybe we can actually do something about uh, the abuse problem in this country and we can start holding some of these faith-based institutions accountable for their abuse as well. So, healreport.tv Visit that site, and we will see you next time.